My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Grid Review. I hope you all are doing well. I just made it out here to Lone Wolf Mountain. Currently, it is 43 degrees Fahrenheit. It's nice and cool. At the same time, it's raining. It looks like it's beginning to slacken up, and that means here in a second, we'll get out of the truck and set up our tent real quick. This, everybody, is going to be a hot tent adventure, and I cannot wait for it to begin.
Now that I have the tent fully set up, I'm sure you all have some questions. For an example, why do I have it set up in this way? Basically, I have the front of the tent with the awning facing the woods away from the view. There is a very important reason for that. Later on tonight, going into tomorrow, the winds are going to kick up to around 35 miles an hour. Because of that, I do not want the front of the tent facing the wind. I want as much protection as possible, and I want to leave this open as much as possible. Facing the tent this direction gives me the best chance of doing that. Already the winds are beginning to pick up, folks. One problem that I have here is with the front of the tent with this awning. I want to keep the awning open, but unfortunately that means that rain is going to gather on it and then pour inside of the tent. Basically, that means that I need to protect the front of this tent so I can keep this open, so I can enjoy it. So what I'm going to do is pretty simple. I'm going to grab a tarp and put it over the top of this tent. Otherwise, all of the water that's gathering on top of the awning is going to pour right into the tent shelter, and I do not want that. The tarp is now installed over the top of the tent and the awning can be left open. Plus, the way that I set it up gives me some wind protection. This is a pretty nice setup, everybody. And with this tent here, this is impressive. This is the Nature Hike Massive Tent and it costs only $250. This is a four season tent. It is extremely large. It has three doors, a bug inner that can be taken out. And at the same time, it's a hot tent. This tent features a stove jack. How about that? This is one of the cheap tents that I've picked up off of Timu. Now there's good news. You don't have to buy this tent on Timu. You can actually find it on Amazon. The price is a little bit higher. It's like 300 instead of 250, but you have some peace of mind there. Inside of the tent, it's currently raining. We are fully protected. Life is good. First things first, I've got to get out of this rain gear. <laughs> it is so hot. One thing I want you all to focus on here is the ground sheet that I'm using. You can see that I've basically covered up most of the grass here, and that is for an important reason. Basically, the ground's wet, the grass is wet. That's a lot of moisture that would be coming into this tent if we don't cover it up. By covering this up, we're lowering condensation that's going to form later on tonight. Especially when it gets cold, we'll seal this up some, and we'll be glad that we have this coverage on the ground.
cowboy coffee, chocolate coffee. It's awesome. Cheers, everyone. We have storms out there somewhere, folks. That's to our north. That means the storm, that at least that storm is not coming here. The winds are picking up. It is going to get interesting. <laughs> I have that feeling, you know what I mean? I think it's possible we're about to get hit by a thunderstorm. I know one thing for certain though, the sky is mean looking. Starting to rain again. I love it. <laughs> and I know you all do too. I know you all do too. So far with this Nature Hike Massive Tent, it is doing an excellent job. It's been waterproof 100% even when I was setting it up. The inside stayed dry. So far, there's been no leaking. Now, of course, we have a tarp over most of it now, but in the future, I will do a dedicated rain test for this tent. But so far, so good. Especially for the money, everybody. For the money, this is really hard to beat. Unless this tent has some sort of catastrophic failure, this is looking to be the best budget fourth season tent that you could possibly buy. It blows all budget fourth season tents out of the water. This, my friends, is impressive for the money. I just barely got back to the tent in time. It is now raining outside and it sounds like the storm is getting closer. I'm hearing more and more thunder and folks, it's on its way here. Without a doubt, we're about to be hit by a big thunderstorm. I tell you what everybody, before the storm kicks in, let me get in a few shout outs real quick. First, Mark and Emily, congrats on the engagement. I wish you both the best. As far as advice goes for you all from someone who's been married for over 20 years, let me say this. Think very carefully about the words that you choose to use. Words mean a lot and they have a lasting impact. So really think about what you're going to say before you say it. As far as the shout outs go, that is all that I have for this episode. In truth, I have a whole lot more, but I've fallen behind. So in the next episode, I will give everybody a shout out who sent in letters, packages, and so on.
The thunderstorm is right over the top of us. It's hailing right now and the ground is turning white. everybody <laughs> all we could do now everybody is just hunker down underneath this tent so far I have to say I am very impressed with this that's not to say that everything's been perfect there is one small leak at one of the vents over here considering how much rain has fallen today and the intensity of the storms one drip that's not bad it's coming from a vent and the simple fact is with a lot of tents they will leak from the vents. Luckily, that is something that we can seam seal very easily and that will solve the problem. If this was a $700 tent, it would be unacceptable. But that's not the case with this tent. This is $250 or $300 on Amazon. That's not bad at all. One small drip after the severe thunderstorm that we went through, that's acceptable in my book. As we go into the evening, I believe we are done with the rain for a little bit, at least for a little while. I'm seeing quite a bit of blue sky over here, basically coming this way. Also, the winds have calmed down just a little bit, but the temperatures haven't been rising any. It's still nice and cool, and it feels really, really good. A 
A little while ago, you all saw me make coffee with a new stove. That is the Fire Maple Sunflower Stove. It is a dual purpose product. Basically, it's a stove and it's also a heater. In this episode, I was hoping to use it inside of my tent and also do some testing with it. I have a CO monitor that's many years old and unfortunately, when I went to grab it this morning, it was having some sort of issue and it kept turning itself off. It's defective and unfortunately, I wasn't able to get another one. Because of that, I'm not going to use it inside of the tent as a heater. Since we're not going to seal ourselves up inside of the tent, even with good ventilation and use that heater, why don't we use the heater with the tent being fully opened? Let's see how well it performs. Let's see if it warms up that tent, even with the doors and the awning open. I've been inside of the tent here for maybe five minutes with this stove going, with the heater going, whatever you want to call it. I think I've been calling it a stove. It is. But in heater mode, this is an interesting product. I can't say that it really works all that well as a heater, to be honest. And that's because the heat from this heater is really easily influenced by the wind. So like in the last five minutes or so, when the wind is blowing this way, I can really feel the heat coming from this heater. But let's say the wind direction changes. It takes that heat and it just puts it in a different place. Sometimes straight out of the tent, sometimes straight up. It's constantly changing. And we're inside of a tent. Imagine what it would be like if you were outside. This is one of those products where like, there doesn't need to be any wind because if there is, it's gonna move that heat around and it will be very difficult to find it. With the heater here, it's not like it's just putting out a ton of heat, like a big radius of heat. It's a column of heat. So depending on what the wind is doing, it could be straight up, could be straight this way or straight that way. It's constantly changing. And again, it's not like this entire area is hot. It's just like a column of heat. Like right now, it's right here, but it's constantly changing. My friends, the rain has returned. That's okay, at least for the moment, the wind is calm.
My friends, it is now dinner time. What I have here is sauteed peppers, brisket, covered in cheese, and then to top it off, we have some barbecue sauce. In addition, we also have a nice cold beer. <laughs> I actually purchased this back in the spring. You all may remember when I drank one of these in some trip. Well, here's the other one. <laughs> I'm not sure if you all know this or not, but brisket is king of the meats, at least in my opinion. Man, that's good. Mm. Cheers, everyone. pretty good. As far as the time goes, it is now 618. <laughs> hmm. Well, everybody, mistakes have been made. I ended up breaking this spoon sport thing. The only reason I'm using this is because I pretty much left everything else behind. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the only thing inside of my truck. I messed up. Um, as far as the beer goes, it's okay. It's like a fruity sort of thing. It's not my personal preference. I don't remember exactly why I bought this. Come here.
It's now dark out. Time, 7.30. Temperature, lower 40s. It's nice. It's really nice. I was getting a little bit cold inside of this tent, so I decided to fire up a true heater. This is the Covia Cupid. This is an indoor heater. You can use this inside. You don't have to worry about anything. Whereas the fire maple heater really isn't that good. This makes a lot of sense. That, not so much. To be honest, everybody, I don't like the sunflower. I don't like it as a stove. I don't like it as a heater. Unfortunately, I just don't like it. It really does have a lot of problems. I wish I brought a thermometer with me because inside of this tent, it's gotta be close to, I don't know, 75 degrees right now. <laughs> this little Cupid heater puts out a lot of heat. And even for a large tent like this, like I'm getting hot. I'm going to take off this jacket and then turn down the stove. I wish you all were with me so you can feel the difference inside of this tent and outside of this tent. Outside, low 40s. Inside, 75 degrees. I really do like this Cupid heater. It works really well inside of a tent and it also works really well inside of like your vehicle. Speaking of using it inside of a tent, I have plenty of ventilation. This door over here is cracked and I have a large section of this door open. There's plenty of airflow so you don't have to worry about that. tell you what folks I am ready for bed it's been a long day but it's been a great day I've enjoyed the weather and I've also enjoyed this setup this is pretty slick everybody again it absolutely blows my mind that you could buy this tent for 250 300 I mean that's incredible considering the size of this the materials it's a hot tent too to me that's crazy as for the time it is now 9 30 and since there's nothing to do, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to set my alarm for six o'clock in the morning. I will see you all then. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is now 6.30. It is around 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Outside, it is clear, windy, and cool. Inside of this tent, it is now nice and warm. This little heater feels great. This is a heater that actually makes sense. <laughs> As for last night, I slept great. I did dream just 
crazy stuff like all night long very very intense it's like I slept I don't know if I rested any but I slept I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned that before but that's usually how it goes for me every single night I just have like extremely vivid and detailed dreams very crazy and it's from like the moment I go to sleep to the moment I wake up like if I wake up and go back to sleep I pick up right where I left off it sounds interesting sometimes it is but sometimes it's also a nightmare and I don't mean like I'm having a nightmare I'm just saying like it's like a movie playing in your head all night long. I get that from my dad. He's pretty much the same way. I should ask him about that. I know when I was a kid he would tell me about his crazy dreams and stuff. I wonder if he still dreams like that. That is some good coffee right there. That Taster's Nasty Hazelnut, Taster's Choice Hazelnut, it is so good. You can mix it with anything by itself, whatever, it is great. What is also great is this little heater here. I went ahead, I fired up the sunflower inside of this tent. I have great ventilation. That's because I really don't have a choice. It's too windy to go outside. <laughs> it's too windy, too chilly. I'm not doing it at 6.30 in the morning. So I just went ahead, fired it up in here. No big deal. Unfortunately, when it comes to the sunflower, I don't like it. I don't think it's a very good stove. I think it's a really poor heater. It doesn't make for a good surface to cook on. Yeah, I just don't like it. Plain and simple. That's my review. I don't like it. Don't buy it. As far as the tent goes, I am very impressed. I did notice though that it is leaking from two points and that's the vents. From either side I saw water drops but it wasn't enough to make it inside of the tent. My plan is to do a rain test with this tent, a true one. We're going to get it out, no tarp, let it rain all day long, let's see how well it performs. So far all I see are the issues with the vents and luckily we can seam seal those very easily. I mentioned this yesterday, if this was a very expensive tent I would not be pleased, but again, we're talking about 250, 300. That's pretty minor. But with that being said, more testing needs to be done. You know, folks, this is a fantastic way to go hot tent camping. No wood stove, little portable gas heaters like this that are safe with proper ventilation. This is so easy. This is so simple. And at the same time, like it's really, really comfortable. Outside, we're in the 30s. Like, it's gotta be 70 something. I don't know. It's warm. Yeah, this really is nice. This is a nice setup. And you could, you could create a setup like this for much less money if you wanted to. Get yourself a big old Coleman tent and some gear and you'll be good to go. You will also need a good heater. The Covia heater works great for tents of this size, even though this is a big size tent. Whereas the Mr. Buddy heater, 
it's too much in most cases. With a buddy heater, you turn it on and then turn it off, turn it on, then turn it off. I guess since we're talking about gear, let's talk about this Anchor power station here. I picked this up because I wanted something that was smaller and lighter, and also something that charged much faster than my other systems. I wanted something that I could review for you all for those purposes. So I did some searching, I came across this, and so far, this is fitting the bill. With the other power stations that I have, they're just so heavy, so hard to move around. In truth, they're just too big for anything other than like overlanding. Or they take so long to charge, you know. This thing will charge in about 40 minutes, something like that, 50 minutes. It's really quick. Talking about being comfortable last night, that heating pad was amazing. Every couple of hours, I would notice it was off. I just turn it back on. It has like a built-in timer, it doesn't just stay on. On low, super warm, super cozy, and I don't think it used much power. Oh yeah, not bad at all. That's pretty impressive considering the fact that we've ran this light basically all day yesterday into the night. Now we're running the light again, and we were running that heating pad. So that's pretty good. With this hot tent adventure, I'm using this stove. In the next hot tent adventure, I will be using a wood stove inside of this tent. That won't be the next trip, but a future trip. It needs to cool down just a little bit more before we do that sort of adventure. From what I understand, next week it's gonna warm up just a little bit, so let's wait until it cools down. Oh man, I'm so excited about snow. We've had our first snow already, and unfortunately I missed it. Basically, I had gone out for a trip, come back home, I was beginning editing that video, then I received the report that the mountaintops were getting some snow. I was like, oh man, I missed it. <laughs> I'm not going to beat myself up about it because I just got back from a trip, but like the forecasts, you just can't trust them, they're so off. The day before yesterday when I was planning this trip, the forecast was for rain to begin yesterday after 2 p.m. Well, I wake up at six o'clock in the morning and it is pouring the rain. <laughs> I look at the forecast and it said that rain was going to end in the morning. So honestly, I did not expect for it to rain when I got out here. There was a slight chance of thunderstorms and what do you know, we got one. But that's how it goes. Like, all of these forecasts are just so off. And really, there's no one that you can fully trust. Like I've checked out the YouTube channels, everybody's recommended but even they are off. And they'll tell you straight up, if they're honest anyways, that their forecasts are normally wrong. And that's true. As far as weather forecasts go, I check with NOAA, and that's pretty much it. They're the most accurate. Everybody else is just simply copying them anyway. So, it is what it is. It is now 8 o'clock in the morning, and I believe it is time to go. It is time to pack all of this up, take it home, dry it out, and begin again. This has been a fantastic hot tent adventure. I've had so much fun, and I want to thank you all very much for joining me for these trips, not just this one. You all are always welcome here, and I'm thankful that you guys come with me, and gals too. If you have enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot. Also, if you want to join the Wolf Pack, you could do so on Patreon or become a member here on YouTube. Make sure to check out my second channel, A Quiet Place Adventures. You will find new adventures on there every single week, in addition to the adventures that you find on this channel as well. I wanna wish you all well. Be safe out there. Strength and honor. Bye for now.